Hello, I'm back again with another episode, one more video for you. Now I'm always looking forward to your feedback on the quality of learning, the content, the style, the speed, the understanding. Please give your feedback in the comment box. I would welcome them. Okay, so we are going to go on to another episode, a learning episode for you. Let's begin. All right, well, I've got this for you. I hope you can see me as well. You can read correctly everything I've written out here. Okay, so here it goes. Right, what I have got for you is something from Bernard Shaw, George Bernard Shaw. He talks about change. You change, things will change. That's what he writes. Please have a look. Progress is impossible without change. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. Those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. Gentlemen, countrymen and gentlemen, my dear friends, very important to change in the present circumstances and also to adapt. Let's learn today four ways of using ing. The first one is a gerund. That means any verb with ending in ing and used right in the beginning of a sentence is a gerund. An example of gerund is given here. You can have a look. I think it's absolutely clear. It says <clears throat> very clear. Staring while driving can be dangerous. Staring when you're driving outside the window, looking suddenly here and there can be very, very dangerous. So staring is a verb from stare and it's at the beginning of the sentence. So this is the first use of the ing. The second word is the continuous verb. The continuous verb can be ex can be understood by an example where you know it talks about the boy is swimming in the lake. The boy is swimming in the lake. The ing using the verb swim is coming in the center of the sentence. So it's another way of using ing. The third one is adjective principle. Now adjective principle as the term defines talks about the adjective. Let's take an example. Wearing a scanty dress, she created a sensation on the stage. Wearing a scanty dress. Now here's wearing represents a full Sentence like the person who was wearing a scanty dress. Now, this, is, this sentence has been reduced to just one word that is wearing, and it is the use of ing as an adjective. The last one is the adverb, adverb participle. I have discussed participle in my earlier videos, you can kindly see them. and. Uh, it will be very clear. Take an example. Not wanting to be embarrassed. We came to the show late. Not wanting to be embarrassed. We came to the show late. So these are the four different ways in which I have put across the use of ING ink. So my listeners, my viewers, it's a very short video I'm making for you so that your interest is kindled and you continue to give me your support in these videos. Let's move on to the next part of this video and that is called Power of Advanced English for Advanced Learners. 
I am bringing for you always, you know, such material in English language which not only introduces you to some good passage of English but also tells you about, informs you about rather of what's happening around us, the current affairs. So this has been pulled out from the Hindustan Times editorial section today and I'm going to read it for you so you can mark the pronunciations as well. Yes, gentlemen, look, look and hear very carefully to what I'm going to read now for you. Right. So it says the article says. India and China are inching their way towards a new equilibrium on the border. The new border equation is likely to make the LAC, line of actual control, marked by large buffer zones and winter withdrawals. Similar to the LOC, line of control, marked by Permanent deployments, firm range firing, beg your pardon, firing range disturbance distances and constant friction. Manage managing this transition while restoring to use euphemism adopted by both the governments, peace and tranquility. Along the border is a new permanent challenge. So I have taken out four words out here for you. Let us discuss the meanings of these four new words to add to your vocabulary. The first one is equilibrium. Now equilibrium means a state in which opposing forces are balanced right a state where opposing forces are balanced let's take an example in a sentence the task is the maintenance of social equilibrium so the task is that in the social social setup you are maintaining equilibrium the other meaning of equilibrium can be a calm state of mind Example in a sentence is, his intensity could unsettle his equilibrium. Again, his intensity could unsettle his equilibrium. Let's go on to the next word, buffer. And I am exhorting you, I am requesting you, I am suggesting you please see this video twice. Note down the words, the meanings, know more about them. Get familiar with them and start using into your day-to-day -day speaking. Okay, the next word is buffer. Now, buffer means a person or thing that produces a shock or that forms a barrier between incompatibles. That is a person or thing that reduces a shock or that forms a barrier between incompatibles incompatibles means those two parts which don't agree so it's a it, it's a barrier it, it could be a barrier or it could reduce a shock now let's see how this is explained in a sentence family and friends can prove can provide buffer against stress family and friends can provide buffer against stress the second example, the second meaning of buffer other is lessen the impact of something. Lessen the impact of something. The massage helped to buffer the strain. The massage helped the buffer the strain. This third word is transition. Excellent word. And you must you must listen to this very carefully. It's a process of change from one state or condition to another. It's a process of change. Example, students in transition from one class to another. Students in 
transition from one class to another. Now, the second meaning of transition is undergo a process of change. Undergo a process of change. Example in a sentence is, he transitioned into filmmaking effortlessly and easily. He transitioned into filmmaking effortlessly and easily. The last word I have got for you is <clears throat> euphemism. 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 A mild word or expression substituted for one considered to be harsh. So if you're saying some expression or word which is harsh, any other word you use which reduces the intensity of harshness is called euphemism. The jargon has given us downsizing as euphemism for cuts. So if there are cuts in the tax, I mean in, in anything in the economy, if there are cuts of benefits for example, so you can use the word downsizing to play the impact downwards. That is what euphemism is. Now here downsizing is the euphemism. So I'm again saying this sentence. The jargon has given us downsizing as euphemism for cuts. So you caught this uh, vocabulary today. You got advanced uh, learning. You got knowledge of what's happening around. And I'm sure you're liking these videos. I am trying to bring in creativity. I'm trying to bring in, bring in knowledge. And I'm making trying to make things easier for you to learn at home. So our message is that everyone should be able to speak good English anywhere, everywhere, without barriers. And that too, absolutely free, sitting at home. And I am now requesting you as always please subscribe and share this video share the knowledge and give us the support to keep on going to get more and more fantastic knowledge and skills for good english speaking for you i wish you very best for your future and i'm saying goodbye to you till we meet again thank you